our next topic is about compression members. So here is the outline for the compression members. First is the introduction of compression members, then followed by the column theory, effective length, the AISC requirements, the local stability followed by tables for compression members, design, more on effective length, torsional and flexural or torsional buckling, and built up members. So we go on ahead about the introduction of the compression members. Compression members are structural elements that are subjected only to actual compressive forces and the stress can be taken as stress is equals to load over area or F equals to P over A. The most common type of compression member occurring in buildings and bridges is the column, a vertical member whose primary function is to, to support vertical loads. So there are three methods that the AISC or the American Institute of Steel Construction provides to obtain the actual forces and the bending moments in members of a rigid frame. First is the direct analysis method, the second is the effective length method, and the third is the first order method. Now we go ahead with the column theory. And here is the column theory flow chart. First is the definition, then formulas followed by the steps in solving the critical buckling load, and then we will have the example. Now consider the long slender compression member as shown in figure 4.1. If the actual load P is slowly applied, it will ultimately become large enough to cause the member to become unstable and assume the shape indicated by the dash line. The member is said to have buckled, and the corresponding load is called the critical buckling load. Now here is the formula for this long slender compression member where P sub CR is, is, the, is called critical buckling load is equals to pi squared EI over L squared where E is the modulus of elasticity of the material, I is the moment of inertia of the cross-sectional area, and L is the length of the member. The critical load is sometimes referred to as the Euler load or the Euler buckling load. It was first formulated by the Swiss mathematician Leonard Euler and published in 1759. This, this is the differential equation giving the deflected shape of an elastic member subjected to member is d squared y over dx squared is equals to negative m over ei where x locates a point along the longitudinal axis y is the deflection of the axis and m is the bending moment the bending moment is p sub cry or the critical buckling load y and can be also written as y double prime plus P sub CR, the critical buckling load over EI times Y is equal to zero. There are also a dif another differential equations, a second order linear with constant coefficients Y is equal to A cosine CX plus B sine CX, where C is equal to square root of P sub CR over EI and A and B are constants. If the critical load is divided by the cross-sectional area, the critical buckling stress is obtained F sub CR is equals to P sub CR over A, which is equals to pi squared E over L over R squared, where L over R is the slenderness ratio. Here are the steps in solving the critical buckling load. First, you need to solve for the minimum R, which is equals to RY the radius of the gyration. Second is solve for the maximum slender ratio which is equals to L over R. And lastly solve for the critical buckling load which is equals to P sub CR is equals to pi squared EI over L squared. Example number one. A W12 by 50 is used as column to support an actual compressive load of 145 kips. The length is 20 feet, and the ends are pinned. Without regard to the load or resistant factors, investigate this member for stability. The weight of steel not need to be known. 
The critical buckling load is a function of the modulus elasticity, not yield stress or ultimate tensile strength. Now for this problem, we need to investigate if the member is stable or not. So the first step is to get the R, the radius of gyration, which is equals to 1.96. And second is, you need to get the slenderness ratio, which is the length over the R. 20 times 12 over 1.96 is equals to 122.4. And then lastly, you need to get the critical buckling load, which is pi squared times 29,000 times 14.6 over 122.4 squared which is equals to 278.9 kips now because of the applied load of 145 kips is less than the critical buckling load which is 278.9 kips the column remains stable and has overall factor safety against the buckling of 1.92 since the critical buckling load is bigger than the slenderness ratio our column remains stable. Now for the effective length. The flowchart is definition and formulas and figures. Both the Euler and the tangent modulus equations are based on the following assumptions. So there are three conditions. First is the column is perfectly straight with no initial crookedness. Second is the load is axial with no eccentricity. Third is the column is pinned at both ends. So for example, consider a compression member pinned at one end and fixed against the rotation and translation at the other as shown in figure 4.7. The Euler equation for this case derived in the same manner as equation. P sub CR is equal to 2.05 squared EI over L squared or P sub CR is equal to pi squared EA over 0.70 LR squared. For convenience, the equations for critical buckling load will be written as P sub CR is equal to pi squared EA over KLR squared or P sub CR is equal to pi squared E sub TA over KLR squared where KL is the effective length, K is the effective length factor which is 0.70 both ends fixed against rotation and translation K is equal to 0.5. AISC requirements Here is the flow chart. First is the definition, then the formulas, followed by the steps in computing the design compressive strength for LRFD and the allowable strength for ASD, and then we have the examples. The nominal compressive strength is Pn is equal to FCRAG. For LRFD, Pu is less than or equal to FCPn, where Pu is the sum of the factored loads FC is the resistant factor for compression, which is 0.9, and FCPN is the design compressive strength. For ASD, PA is less than or equal to PN over ohm sub C, where P sub A is the sum of the service loads, where the ohm sub C is equal to safety factor for compression, which is 1.67, and the PN over ohm sub C is equal to allowable compressive strength. If an allowable stress formulation is used FA is less than or equal to FA, where FA is computed actual compressive stress, which is equal to PA over AG, FA is the allowable actual compressive stress, which is equal to FCR over ohm sub C, equals to FCR over 1.67 is equal to 0.6 FCR. In order to present the AISC expressions for the critical stress FCR, we first define the Euler load as P sub E is equal to pi squared EA over KL over R squared. This is the critical buckling load according to the Euler equation. The Euler stress is Fe is equal to PE over A is equal to pi squared E over KL over R squared. To obtain the critical stress for elastic columns, FCR is equal to 0.877 Fe. For an elastic columns, the tangent modulus equation, FCR is equal to 0.658 raised to Fy over Fe times Fy. The AISC specification provides for separating an elastic 
an elastic behavior based on either the value of KL over R. The complete AISA specification for compressive strength is as follows. When KL over R is less than or equal to 4.71 square root of E over FY, or FY over FE is less than or equal to 2.25, FCR is equal to 0.658 raised to FY over FE times FY. When KL over R is greater than 4.71 square root of E over FY, or FY over FE is greater than 2.25, FCR is equal to 0.877 FE. Example number 2. A W14 by 74 of A992 steel has length of 20 feet and pinned ends. Compute the design compressive strength for LRFD and the allowable compressive strength for ASD. Here are the steps in computing the design compressive strength for LRFD and allowable strength for ASD. Number 1. Solve for the slenderness ratio. The formula is written below. Number 2. Solve for the nominal strength. Pn is equal to FCR times AG. Number 3. Solve for the design compressive strength. FCPN. And number 4. Solve for the allowable stress. FA is equal to 0.6 FCR. Lastly, solve for the allowable compressive strength Fa times Ag. Solution Slenderness ratio Maximum KL over I is equal to KL over Ry is equal to 1 times 20 times 12 over 2.48 is equal to 96.77 less than 200. So it is okay. 4.71 square root of E over Fy is equal to 4.71 square root of 29,000 over 50 is equals to 113. Since 96.77 is less than 113, use AIS equation E3-2, where Fe is equals to 30.56 KSI, and FCR is equals to 25.21 KSI. The nominal strength is Pn is equals to FCR AG, equals to 25.21 times 21.8 is equal to 549.6 kips. The design strength is FCPN is equal to 0.9 times 549.6 is equal to 495 kips. The allowable stress is FA is equal to 0.6 FCR is equal to 0.6 times 25.21 is equal to 15.13 KSI. The allowable strength is F8 times AG is equal to 330 kips. Answer, the design compressive strength is 495 kips and the allowable compressive strength is 330 kips. Local Stability Local Stability Flowchart First is the definition, next is the formulas and figures, Next is the steps in investigating the columns for local stability, and last is the example. Two types of elements must be considered, unsteep elements which are unsupported along one edge parallel to the direction of load and steep elements which are supported along both edges. Limiting values of width to thickness ratios are given in AISC. Classification of sections for local buckling for compression members, shapes are classified as slender or non-slender. If a shape is slender, its strength limit state is local buckling, and the corresponding reduced strength must be computed. Using the AISC notation gives, the formula is written below, where BF and TF are the width and thickness of the flange. The upper limit formula is written below which is equal to 0.56 square root of V over Fy. The width to thickness parameter is equal to H over Tw, where H is the distance between the roots of the flanges, Tw is the web thickness. The upper limit is equal to 1.49 square root of V over Fy. Stiff and unstiff elements of various cross-sectional shapes are illustrated in figure 4.9.
steps in investigating the columns for local stability. First, solve for the reduced strength using AIS notation which is equal to B sub F over 2 D sub F. Second, solve for the upper limit using 0 0.56 square to V over FY. Third, solve for the width to thickness parameter using H over T sub W. Lastly, solve for the upper limit using 1.49 squared of E over FY. Example number 3. Investigate the column of example 2 for local stability. Solution. For a W14 times 74, BF is equal to 10.1 inch, TF is equal to 0.785 inch, and to substitute its value, so we have 6.43. Upper limit formula 0 0.56 square root of V over FY. Substitute, so we have 13.5, which is greater than 6.43. The upper limit formula substitute 14.2 minus 2 times 1.38 over 0 0.450 is equal to 25.4 where k this is the design value of k different manufacturers will produce this shape with different values of k the design value is the smallest of these values the detailing value is the largest so 1.49 Square root of 29,000 over 50 is equal to 35.9, which is greater than 25.4. Answer. Local stability is not a problem. Tables for compression numbers. Next is the tables for compression members flowchart. First, definition. Second, steps in computing the available strength of compression member and column load tables. And lastly, example. For compression members whose strength is governed by flexure of buckling, the use of tables is illustrated in the following example. Example number 4. Compute the available strength of the compression member of example number 2 with the aid of table 4-22 from part 4 of the manual and B, the column load tables. Steps in computing the available strength of compression member and column load tables. 1. For LRFT. A. Available strength of compression member. First, solve for the nominal compressive strength using interpolation. FCPN is equal to FCFCRAG. B. Solve for the column load tables. First, solve for the effective length KL. Second, solve for the design compressive strength FCPN. Solution LRFD. Letter A. From example number 2, KL over R is equal to 96.77 and FY is equal to 50 KSI. For uniformity, we use interpolation in this book for all tables unless otherwise indicated. So we have FC, FCR is equal to 22.67 KSI. FCPN is equal to FC, FCR AG, which is equal to 494 KIPS. Letter B, from example number 2, K is equal to 1.0, so KL is equal to 20 feet. For a W14 times 74, FY is equal to 50 KSI and KL is equal to 20 feet. FCPN is equal to 495 KIPS. For ASD, Available strength of compression member. First, solve for the allowable strength using interpolation, PN, which is the compressive strength over safety factor for compression, is equal to FAAG. B. Column load tables. First, solve for the effective lead KL. And lastly, solve for the allowable strength using compressive strength over safety factor for compression. 
solution. ASD. Letter A. From example number 2, KL over R is equal to 96.77 and FY is equal to 50 KSI. By interpolation, we have 15.07 KSI. Note that this is the allowable stress FA is equal to 0.6 FCR. Therefore, the allowable strength is equal to 329 kips. Letter B. From example number 2, K is equal to 1.0, so we have KL is equal to 20 feet. From the column load tables, for a W14 times 24 with FY is equal to 50 KSI, and KL is equal to 20 feet. So we have the allowable strength is equal to 329 chips. Design. Next is the design flowchart. First is the definition. Second is the steps in computing the required design strength and the required allowable strength. And lastly is the example. The selection of an economical roll sheet to resist a given compressive load is simple with the aid of the column load tables. Steps in computing the required design strength and the required allowable strength. 1. For LRFD, A. Calculate the required design strength, PU, which is equal to 1.2 dead load plus 1.6 live load. For ASD, calculate the required allowable strength, PA, which is equal to dead load plus live load. Example number 5. A compression member is subjected to service load of 165 kips dead load and 535 kips live load. The member is 26 feet long and pit at each end. Use a 992 steel and select a W14 shape. Solution LRFT Calculate the factored load. PU is equal to 1.2 dead load plus 1.6 live load. Required design strength PU is equal to 1054 kips. Answer. Use a W14 times 145. Solution. ASD. Calculate the total applied load. PA is equal to dead load plus live load. Is equal to 700 kips. Required allowable strength is equal to 700 kips. Answer. Use a W14 times 132. More on effective length. More on effective length flowchart. First is the definition, next is the figures. Next is the steps in computing the available compressive strength. And last is the example. If a compression member is supported differently with respect to each of its principal axes, the effective length will be different for the two directions. As shown schematically in figure 4.10, if the member were to buckle about the major axis, the effective length would be 26 feet, whereas buckling about the minor axis would have to be in the second buckling mode, corresponding to an effective length of 13 feet. Example number 6, a W1258 shape, 24 feet long, is pinned at both ends and braced in the weak direction at the third point. As shown in figure 4.11, a 992 steel is used. Determine the available compressive strength. So here are the steps in computing the available compressive strength. So for LRFB, first is to calculate the slenderness ratio which is KL over R where our K is the effective length, L is the embrace length, R is the radius of duration. And next is to solve for the design compressive strength, which is Fc times Pn is equals to Fc times Fcr times Ag. Solution per LRFD. Slenderness ratio with respect to the strong direction is equal to 24 times 12 over 5.28, which is equal to 54.55. While slenderness ratio with respect to the weak is equal to 8 times 12 over 2.51, which is equal to 38.25. As we can see, Kx sub L over R sub X is the larger value, so it controls. From the table 4 22 from part 4 of the manual, and with KL over R is equal to 54.55, and FC times FCR is equal to 36.24 KSI. 
And FC times PN is equals to FC times FCR times AG is equals to 36.24 times 17 is equals to 616 kips, which is the design strength. For ASD, first is to solve the allowable strength using interpolation, where PN over omega C is equals to FA times AG. From table 4-22 with KL over R is equals to 54.55, uh, FCR over safety factor for compression is equals to 24.09 KSI, and FCR over safety factor for compression times cross-sectional area is equals to 24.09 times 17 is equals to 410, which is our allowable strength. And flexural torsion and buckling. Torsional and flexural torsional buckling flow chart. First is the definition. Next is the formulas and figures. Third one is the steps in computing the compressive strength for LRF DNASD. And, and last is the example. When an actually loaded compression member becomes unstable overall, it can buckle in one of three ways, as shown in figure 4.18. Flexural buckling. It is a deflection caused by bending or flexure about the axis corresponding to the largest slenderness ratio. Second is torsional buckling. This type of failure is caused by twisting about the longitudinal axis of the member. It can occur only with doubly symmetrical cross sections with very slender cross sectional elements. And last is flexural torsional buckling. This type of failure is caused by a combination of flexural buckling and torsional buckling. So there are three formulas. First is for double symmetrical shapes, torsional buckling. Second is for singly symmetrical shapes, flexural torsional buckling, where Y is the axis of symmetry. And last is for shapes with no axis of symmetry, flexural torsional buckling, as shown below. In above equations, the Z axis in the longitudinal axis, the previously undefined terms in these three equations are defined as. Fe is the smallest root, CW is the warping constant, KZ is the effective length factor for torsional buckling, G is the shear modulus in KSI which is equal to 11,200 KSI for steel, and J is the torsional constant. Where Y is the axis of symmetry for singly symmetrical shapes, formula is shown below. Where Z is the longitudinal axis and X sub 0 and Y sub 0 are the coordinates for the shear center of the cross section with respect to the centroid in inches. The procedure for flexural torsional buckling analysis of double angles in T's is given in AISC. There is also some notational change. FE becomes FCR, FEY becomes FCRY, and FEZ becomes FCRZ. To obtain FCRZ, we can drop the first term of AISC equation. F sub C R Z is equals to G times J over A sub G times R bar sub zero squared. The nominal strength can be computed as P N is equals to F C R times A G where F C R is equals to F C R Y plus F C R Z over two H times one minus square root of one minus four times F C R Y times F C R Z times H over FCRY plus FCRZ squared. This procedure to be used with double angles and T's only. So steps in computing the compressive strength for LRFD and ASD. First is to solve for the slenderness ratio where our slenderness ratio has two conditions. First is when KL over R is lesser than or equal to 4.71 times square root of T over FY or Fy over Fe is lesser than or equal to 2.25. So our FCR would be 0.658 raised to Fy over Fz times Fy. Next condition would be KL over R rate is greater than 4.71 times square root of E over Fy or Fy over Fe is greater than to 2.25. Our FCR would be 0 0.877 times Fe. So next is to solve for the nominal strength, which is equals to Pn 
is equals to FCR times AG. So for the third step is to solve for the flexural torsional buckling strength. So there would be a th three conditions. So first condition is F sub EX is equals to pi squared times E over K sub X times L over R sub X squared. Second is FEY is equals to pi squared times E over K sub Y times L over R sub Y squared. And the last, last one I mean is F sub EZ is equals to pi squared E times C sub W over K sub Z times L squared plus GJ times 1 over AG R bar sub 0 squared. Fourth step is to solve for the singly symmetrical shapes, flexural torsional buckling. So the formula is given there. So fifth is to solve for the nominal strength where Pn is equals to FCR times AG. Sixth is for LRFD is to solve for the design compressive strength is equal to FC times Pn and for the ASD for the allowable stress fa is equals to 0.6 times fcr and for the allowable compressive strength is fa times ag example number seven compute the compressive strength of a c15 by 50 shape of 836 steel the effective length with respect to x y and z axis are each 13 feet solution kl over r is equals to 180.3 E is equals to pi squared times E over KLR squared, where F e is equals to 8.805 KSI. 0.71 times square root of E over FY is equals to 133.7. Since KL over R is greater than 4.71 times square root of E over a FY, AISC equation E3-2 applies, where FCR is equals to 0 0.877 times FE which is equal to 7.722 KSI. Nominal strength is Pn is equals to FCR times AG where 7.722 times 14.7 is equal to 113.5 kips. So compute the flexural torsional buckling strength about the x-axis. This is the axis of symmetry for H channel. L over R is equals to 29.77 and FEY is equals to 323.0 KSI so The formula for FEX is shown So our FEX is equals to 80.06 KSI And our R bar sub 0 is tabulated So FEY plus FEZ is equals to 323.0 plus 80.6 Is equals to 403.1 KSI And also for our FE formula is shown so f is equals 28.46 ksi so h is tabulated since k sub x l over r sub x is lesser than 4.71 times square root of e over f y use a i s equation e3-2 and f c r is equals to 29.71 ksi the nominal strength is equals to 436.7 kips. The flexural buckling strength controls and the nominal strength is 113.5 kips. So the answers for the LRFD design strength is FC times PN which is equals to 0.90 times 113.5 is equals to 102 kips. For ASD, the allowable stress is FA is equals to 0.6 times FCR which is equals to 0 0.6 times 7.722 is equals to 4.633 KSI and the allowable strength is FA times AG is equals to 4.633 times 14.7 which is equals to 68.1 kips so for those who are asking what is LRFD and ASD LRFD stands for load and resistance factor design and ASD is Allowable stress design. Built up members. Our last topic would be built up members. Built up members flow chart. Definition. 
steps and compute in the design compressive strength and allowable compressive strength on flexure buckling. Then examples. If the cross-sectional properties of a built-up compression member are known, its analysis is the same as for any other compression member, provided the component parts of the cross-section are properly connected. The design strength of a built-up compression member is a function of the slenderness ratio KL over R. Hence, the principal axis and the corresponding ratio of duration about this axis must be determined. For homogeneous cross-sections, the principal axis coincides with the centroidal axis. So, steps in computing the design compressive strength and allowable compressive strength on flexural buckling. So, first is to solve for the slenderness ratio, where our slenderness ratio has a two conditions. Next would be to solve for the nominal strength Pn is equals to FCR times AG. Third is to solve for the design compressive strength FC times Pn for LRFD. Fourth is to solve for the allowable stress FA is equals to 0.6 times FCR. And lastly is to solve for the allowable compressive strength FA times AG for ASD. Example number 8. The column shown in figure 4.19 is fabricated by wielding 3 over 8 inch by 4 inch cover plate to a flange of a W18 by 65 shape. Steel with F550 KSI is used for both components. The effective length is 15 feet with respect to both axes. Assume that the components are connected in such a way that the member is fully effective and commute the strength based on the flexural buckling. The sum of the moments of component areas about any axis, in this example, a horizontal axis along the top of the plate will be used, must equal to the moment of the total area. Y bar is equal to summation of AY over summation of A, where our Y bar is equal to 8.893 inch. Location of the horizontal centroidal axis known, the moment of inertia with respect to this axis can be found by using the parallel axis theorem. I is equals to I bar plus AD squared, where I bar stands for moment of inertia about the centroidal axis of a component area, A is area of the component, I is the moment of inertia about an axis parallel to centroidal axis of the component area, and D is the perpendicular distance between the two axes. The moment of inertia about the X axis is I sub X, which is equal to 1193 inch raised to 4. The vertical axis, IY bar is equals to 56.80 inch raised to 4. Since I sub Y is lesser than I sub X, then Y axis controls. R min is equals to RY, where our RY has a formula of square root of I sub Y over A, which is equals to square root of 56.80 over 20.60, which is equals to 1.661 inch. KL over R is equals to 108.4. FE is equals to pi squared times E over KLR squared is equals to 24.36 KSI. 4.71 times E over FY is equals to 113. Since KL over R is lesser than 4.71 times E over FY, then use AISC equation E3-2. FCR is equals to 0 0.658 raised to FY over FE times FY where our FCR is equals to 21.18 KSI. The nominal strength is PN is equals to 21.18 times 20.60 which is equal to 436.3 kips. The design strength is FC times PN which is 0 0.90 times 436.3 which is equals to 393 kips. The allowable stress is FA is equals to 0 0.6 times FCR, which is 0 0.6 times 21.18 is equal to 12.71 KSI. Allowable strength is FA times AG, which is 12.71 times 20.60 is equals to 262 kips. So the answer for our design compressive strength is equals to 393 kips and for the allowable compressive strength is equals to 262 kips.